Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this little ACOG that you see in my hand right here. This will be the newest ACOG added to the Trigicon lineup, at least as far as I know. This is the TA44, which we've actually reviewed before in the past, and we'll get to that a little bit later on uh, when we discuss reticles. But this one here has the ACSS reticle, which is an exclusive uh, to primary arms. So this one here, um, in my opinion, is the much improved version of the original TA44. Uh, like all ACOGs, super rugged, super durable, excellent super clear glass and just a better reticle on this one so what we're going to do is let the dogs take a look at it make sure they approve of course get into some of the features of the optic itself for those that are unfamiliar with the ta44 then we're going to actually dial up dimitri the gentleman who uh, invented this reticle and came up with it and at the end we'll let you know what we think of it overall Getting into the optic itself, like all ACOGs, it does have a Forge 7075 T6 aluminum body. It is hard coat anodized, and then Trigicon puts that coating on there. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure of what it is, but it almost feels like a hard rubber. Very durable stuff, uh, lasts forever. It's extremely corrosion resistant, all that stuff. Uh, these are submersible, I believe, down to 30 meters and will retain all you know seals and all that stuff. So in terms of uh, weather resistance, it's hard to beat an ACOG. So. Uh, this, of course, is the shorter one. We'll do some size comparisons here in just a second. But like most ACOGs these days, it has the uh, toolless adjustment system for windage and elevation. If you take a look here at the uh, windage knob here, it has, it has a half MOA adjustments. So if you're at 100 yards and you want to move the reticle one inch, you have to do two clicks. So each click equates to half inch at 100 yards. The same is true for the elevation. Now this optic itself is a dual illuminated ACOGS, meaning that it has tritium on the inside. The tritium is uh, designed to work and illuminate for, I believe, 12 years. And then also on top, we have the fiber optic rod that is going to gather light from around you and then focus that light onto the reticle itself. So if you're in low light, that tritium is going to be taken over. And uh, out in the day when you want it a little bit brighter, the fiber optic will take over as well. We'll get into blooming a little bit later on here when we discuss the reticle. But um, this one has a much shorter fiber optic rod than say like a full size ACOG. So blooming is much less of an issue on this particular model of ACOG in my opinion and my experience than it is on some others. Other details on the optic is that this optic is very lightweight. In fact, it's going to compete with a lot of red dots in that regard. It comes in right at five ounces without the mount. So again, extremely lightweight. Uh, this one here is the green version, but it will be coming with a red option as well. And the field of view for this optic is very good as well. At 100 yards, looking through it, you can see 39 feet side to side, which that's as good as the TA31, which a lot of people really like for the wide field of view. So that's nice. But the eye relief is uh, better than the TA31, for instance. So this one here is going to give you 2.4 inches of eye relief, as opposed to, again, just with the example of the TA31, uh, one and a half inches. So a little bit more generous eye relief as well. Earlier in the video, you guys saw some shooting footage of this optic mounted up on my uh, SLR 106, the uh, AK, and it looked like it was sitting rather high, and that's true. Uh, that's because this particular one that we have in for review right now has the uh, standard base. These are also going to be available with the ACS reticle and everything with the low base. So what that's going to do is allow it to be mounted extremely low with AKs. So really, uh, in terms of like a 545 AK or a 556 AK, it's going to be hard to beat this uh, optic for a magnified optic on that rifle. So that'll be really cool to have the low option to really get it down low on there. Now, the mount we're using 
is the Midwest Industries Micro ACOG mount. Um, one of my favorite mounts, four ACOGs all around for just their standard size, and the Micro one works excellent as well. Gets it right up to standard AR height. I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably never actually seen a TA44 ACOG, so I kind of wanted to give you a size comparison with some other models that you may be more familiar with. Of course, down here, this is the uh, TA31. This one has the ACSS reticle. It's a standard four power ACOG. You guys can kind of see how they stack up size-wise with that one. This one here is the 3.5 power, so this is the TA11 zero, but it's going to be the same size as the TA-11. This just happens to be the battery mounted version. Next to it here is probably its uh, closest competitor in size. This is a TA-45. It's also a uh, 1.5 magnified ACOG, but it has a little bit narrower field of view and a little bit longer eye relief. So uh, that's how those stack up in terms of size. And then of course, on the top, we got the Big Daddy ACOG. It is the uh, machine gun optic, six power, just gigantic mammoth. And you can see it absolutely dwarfs the uh, 44. All right, guys, we have Dimitri with us. He's the gentleman who actually designed the ACSS reticle and the reticle that's in this particular ACOG that we've been talking about here today. So as you guys can see on your screen, we have the reticle up and we're just going to kind of go over some of the um, different capabilities that are built into this little ACOG. So Dimitri, uh, if you could just sort of take it away and start start going through them. Sure. Hi, you guys. And thanks for tuning in. Uh, really quick, the the open donut basically is all your CQB stuff. So anything zero to 100 yards, just simply put the uh, you know donut on and squeeze off. Uh, it's designed to be zeroed in at 50 yards. You know we, we approach this more like a red dot than than an actual magnified optic. So 50 yards dial in at the chevron tip. At 100 yards, you'll be about an inch high, and then at 200 yards, you'll be back on. And what what caliber and load is that with? Ah, uh, this is. It, it, originally, we have it set for 556. Five, you can also dial in 308 to it. Uh, you just go just a hair high on your zero, and everything lines up there. Okay. Uh, we will we'll also list zero on 762 by 39, uh, which that will line up with your supersonics. <clears throat> excuse me, your supersonics on 300 blackout. Uh, we'll try to list different zeros for it. You once you line up the trajectory on this thing, you can get several things to match up, but. You know, it, it, its main thing is 5.56, 5.45 obviously has the same trajectory. Sure. And, uh, 308. Cool. So, Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no problem. Yeah. So at 300 yards, you end up uh, on the bottom of this uh, chevron here. And uh, at 400 yards, you end up at this circle here and then 500 yards. Uh, because it's a one and a half powered optic, you know, I decided to, to stop at five and not go crazy because it's really hard to see at those distances at one and a half power. Um, and then if you notice the, the Chevron is actually uh, ranging from ear to ear, same with this uh, dot. So if he fits ear to ear here, he's at three, four and five. Cool. Yeah. So could you like show us with those little guys there, sure, kind of what sure. you mean by that? Cause I think yeah. people will be confused by that. Right. So let's take a, a you know, like your standard still silhouette or your, your average center mass. Uh, what happens when you engage targets in unknown distance? And again, this is a combative optic. Uh, so when you, you run into an unknown distance situation, you have to know how far away the target is. And you could tell here he's not at five because that dot is way too small. It's not matching ear to ear to where that Chevron is. So um, if I know he's at uh, within 300 yards, I can either shoot here and hit the head or, or transfer it over to center mass. And let's go into a smaller target here. See, so we can tell here he's not at three, he's not at four. The four is like the same size as the whole head. And then this is starting to, to you know, match ear to ear. Sure. Um, and then that's just to get you quickly, you know, a quick shot. But if you want to get more precise than that, um, you know, range estimation is key when you get into medium range. These bars here, and I'll show you guys over here, uh, these are 18 inches. So this is 18 inches at 300 yards, 400 yards, and 500 yards. So I can very quickly match him to the right bar. And I know right here he's at 300 yards. Transfer him to the uh, Chevron here and shoot. Uh, same with this little one. We can tell he's not at three. It's way too big four is too big and then five matches perfect so i know he's 500 yards away and transfer it over here and shoot so it's, it's very simple very uh you know 
a, a very simple system. And at the same time, there's a line here at the bottom that's range estimating 510, which is your average height. <clears throat> so let's say you had a standing target. Uh, all you do is put the feet on the bottom line here and where the head ends up is how far away he is. So here you could tell he's 300 yards away. Mm -hmm. And let's go into the other ones really quick. 400 yards away and obviously 500 with this one. So it's a, it's a, to where like a TA-31 is more of a DMR type optic that allows you to CQB using the, the by naming concept. This allows you to go from a CQB optic into medium range. Absolutely. And for those that didn't watch my original TA-44 review, that was, honestly, that was my, my one complaint about it. If you guys watched that video is that the way the original circle dot reticle, um, looks when you're looking through it at distance it sort of either obscures where you want to hit or doesn't give you any information or feedback as a shooter as to where you need to be holding on it so you end up guessing um this with the open bottom is a huge thing uh in my in this video you guys have seen i'm sure if you haven't yet i'll be rolling in footage here where i took me personally this little guy here out to 330 yards and was getting consistent hits now, with a uh, original TA-44 with the circle dot reticle, there's just no way I would have been able to do that, uh, again, because of reference points, as well as the bottom of the circle is occluded. So to be able to come up on it and actually be able to differentiate the bottom of the circle versus the dots and actually have that space in between where you can see the actual target. Because, you know, if you're talking about three to 500 yards, um, the contrast in the background isn't always there. You know, on a good day with good lighting, with good contrast, it's there. But in real life, that's not always the case. So having that gap there um, really does allow you to get your hold points correct. Um, so d just wanted to throw that out there because I'm sure a lot of people haven't shot the actual original TA-44. So that um, the reticle that you see here is a, just it's a huge improvement over the original in terms of shooting out beyond, say, like 150 yards. Right. For those that don't know, <laughs> that story to this thing is, uh, you know, this is a lot of this is his idea. He, he contacts me and said, hey, you got to check out the TA-44. And at first I thought, I, I thought one and a half power, why? You right. know, and I got a hold of it and I, I saw exactly what you mean. It's a red dot with no batteries. Right. That extra half you need to, for target identification, it's just, it, it just, the image is much clearer. You can see detail. And uh, all, all the things he talked about were the issue. He's right. Anytime you have a lot of uh, sun, it blooms. You can't. There's so much more you could, you know, you could do with that optic. And and this reticle here has solved a lot of that. So it, it really has. And I'm like Dimitri said, like I nagged him uh, basically <laughs> to, to make this. And I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And when you see it, like he said, you know, everybody says, well, you can just get a red dot, and you know, you can make hits it at 300 with a red dot. Yeah, no, you, you totally can. I've done it. And many of you guys I'm sure have done it as well. But if, if your target is in a wood line and you need to know if it's your target or if it's a log, having this is a huge help due to the ACOG glass, the clarity of it, as well as the uh, slight magnification that you get. So there's just there's right. different scenarios with, and pros and cons to each, of course. So um, yeah, this reticle, in my opinion, from everything I've seen using it over the last what, month and a half, it absolutely optimizes what you can get out of this uh, TA-44, which is an excellent optic all around already. So um, right. any, anything else you wanted to add on the, uh, on the reticle here, Dimitri? Um, no, I mean, the reticle is pretty, you know, pretty simple. The, yep. What I've noticed in testing, when we started testing this thing, we can do headshots out to 500 yards with it, where you can't do that with a red dot, unless you have the ACSS micro dot or something. You know that's a that's quite a hold. Your your I mean you could see here on this thing, you know to take a a, a 500 yard shot. If I were to delete the BDC to it, let's say, and this is like let's say if you knew the range, that and that's the big problem that people don't get, is in an unknown distance shot you you don't know where to hold to begin with. Right. But let's say you did. I mean that, you're holding way up here above the guy's head. That's just. That's <laughs> a crazy shot. You know? <laughs> sure. It is so. tough to hold out no man's land. And uh, of course, this is, you know, designed for ranging an 18 inch, 18 inch target because that is what the military, well, 18 or 19, depending on whom you ask, um, designates for ranging targets. However, 
uh, as humans, right? Because it's the military. The military is designed to shoot humans. But anything, you know, if, if you know the size of a deer in, in your area are typically 36 inches long, just a hypothetical here, right? You can do the same math on it, right, to range estimate that. So it's not just for uh, ranging that. It's anything that's 18 inches is applicable within the reticle. So yeah there's there's all kinds of different ways to you know to range objects um you can overlay 18 inches on anything you know right um but it it, it truly is a, an awesome awesome site um you you got me hooked on this thing now and he like three or four of these i get one for free because i designed it but <laughs> that's where it stops but, uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Demetri, to come on here and explain it to you, uh, to everyone because uh, while I do know it, um, it's always good to get it from the source because you know the all the math and everything that went into it and the, and the diff difficulties that went into putting all of this that you guys see on your screen into this little teeny tiny optic. So, Mike, as you know, I've done all kinds of reticles, right? Some really complicated stuff. This was yep. by far the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, and it looks like simple, but because it was so small and then you have the uh, fiber optic illumination and stuff, it was uh, interesting, but it came out good. Well, actually, as you know, at first it didn't come out good. We had to round to it. But. And, that, and that's good, right? So that just shows you guys, right? There was a, this is obviously a prototype that I'm holding in my hand because these are going to be hitting as this video hits, hitting the streets. But there was an earlier prototype. And like he said, um, the original design, when we got it out, you know, on the range, didn't uh, do what we wanted it to do. So yeah. we went back, scrapped it and did it again. So that is just kind of shows really kind of what went into this optic. And that was an extra yeah. am good amount of time uh, oh, that yeah. delayed it, but you got to get it right, right? Right, everything has to be perfect. Uh, yeah, what was happening is all this stuff here was illuminating too. Mm -hmm. And it was drawing your eye to it and certain lighting conditions was washing out because it's not, you know, here everything gets lit up good, but the further away you go from this, uh, uh, you know point of origin it, it starts to lose its lighting so it, it will look just like this to where this draws your eye for all the cqb stuff and then the ranging is secondary all right absolutely all right well, i think we uh covered most of it if you guys have any questions of course you can always uh, ask over uh primaryarms.com right. dimitri's over on their facebook page a good bit and uh, you can ask me as well but anyway we'll let dimitri go uh because it is late as we're filming this and I'm sure he's got other stuff to do, but I appreciate you coming by. Thanks for having me. It's always hey. a pleasure. Awesome. Hopefully you guys are still awake after that reticle discussion. I know that stuff bores a lot of you guys, but for me, it's very interesting, uh, especially being on the back end of this and knowing exactly what went into that, uh, working along Dimitri to get that reticle all worked out. So uh, it was basically him, me, and the Trigicon engineers going over that reticle and how to fit all of that onto this little prism optic here. So all in all, as you guys can imagine, I absolutely love this little optic. Uh, you guys are gonna see it a ton here on the channel. Um, but let's talk about who would want or why you would want a TA44. We sort of discussed it a little bit in terms of the clarity and the contrast that you get versus a red dot, and that's absolutely true. Uh, another big category, I think, of folks who would really like this is going to be folks with astigmatism. So folks who have astigmatism, a lot of times either can't see red dots correctly, sometimes they see double dots, and a lot of them see extremely blurry dots. So if that's you, um, as far as I know, I've never heard of anyone with an astigmatism having a hard time seeing a uh, ACOG clearly. They seem to really clear the issue up. And uh, with the 1.5 power, you're still very fast at CQB type distances. Um, obviously, you know, if you were to give someone this and a red dot with no training and no experience with either, their times are probably gonna be slightly faster at CQB type distances. With the red dot, however, the gap can narrow very quickly with a little bit of practice. So I would have no problem personally using this on a CQB optic at all. Um, and again, the 1.5 power just gives you a little advantage at distance, both in actual shooting with the BDC, as well as target recognition and things like that. So that's certainly a good thing. I think folks said maybe like ranchers or something like that, um, that are poking around, driving around the ranch, this would be a good optic as well, because the durability, you'll never have to worry about it, the weatherproof, all that stuff. Um, it certainly could work well in that role as well. And I'm excited to get one in that'll work on an ACOG with that low, or on an AK rather with that low mount. So 
One thing we didn't discuss is going to be price. Now, as I'm filming this, this is not available for sale yet. They're apparently shipping them as this recording is happening. But when this video drops, if you guys are seeing this, they will be available and there will be a link down below in the video description. But from what I'm told, these are going to retail for between $1,000 and $1,100. So it's actually relatively cheap for an ACOG, but when compared to a red dot, it's a little bit more expensive. And I suppose it just depends you know, what you want, what you prioritize. It's not for everybody, but it will be for some folks. And I think it's gonna be for a lot more folks than the TA-44s have been in the past. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the optic, anything like that that we didn't cover, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page. As always, that is the best way to get in touch with me these days. But thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we hope to see you in the next video.